Well, good afternoon. It's almost the end of January. Where did the first month of 2021 go, huh? Fishwise, remember when I told you going up to Disc Madness, Discus Madness, uh, that I bought that plant and I was so disappointed because what they gave me was just a little sprig of it and the plant looked so beautiful in their grow out tank there that uh, I, I I almost wanted to buy the whole plant, which would be like a hundred dollars. But I got to tell you something: in both this corner tank and also the bow tank, which you'll see in a minute, that plant has taken off. And I got to tell you that the plant growth is almost like it was in their tank from those six tiny sprigs that I got from them. So I take back any complaint I had and very pleased that this plant does so well. And speaking of plants doing well, check out this Amazon sword plant. Now I know one of the complaints is Amazon sword plants get too big, but I gotta tell you something, looking at this plant, especially if you look at it from above, like I'm trying to do right now with the camera. Trying to get an up shot of that Amazon sword so you can get some real sense of how big it is. It really is filling out this corner tank and uh, I keep taking some leaves off it and it keeps coming back more and more. Really a beautiful plant. I've never seen one this big before. That thing is huge. I mean this is a 55 gallon tank and it almost takes up the entire tank. I easily could take out all the other plants and just let this be the one plant in there. And so I couldn't be more pleased. The other thing I'm trying to do, as long as we're talking about the plants, is trying to get back to where my other favorite plant, the Kabamba, repopulates this tank. You may remember uh, many videos ago, the right-hand side of this tank was just all Kabamba. And over time, it just faded out to nothing. And luckily, I saved enough of it in the boat tank, as we'll see in a minute, uh, to actually bring back a couple of sprigs of this to see if it's whatever it is to make this thrive again because it's a beautiful plant it really is these are not very healthy looking sprigs but I just moved them over from some cuttings and it's kind of nice to be able to have your own plants propagating like that uh, to grow out these tanks the other thing plant wise is the uh, little small grass like uh, plants over here that are doing very well in the compost of the uh, gravel in this particular tank. That Madagascar lace plant, which I always talk about, is hanging in there nicely. Uh, leaves aren't getting as big as they used to, as I said. They're kind of narrow, but they're doing fine. And they seem to be thriving in the sort of the shade of that other big plant. Fish-wise here, uh, a bunch of guppies that I've moved out from the office tank uh, just because the office tank was getting too crowded, along with some of the black mollies from there also, as you see going across the top here. Uh, the male swordtail that you see off to the left here is lonely right now because I took his mate and put her back in the office tank, which I often use as a maternity ward. She looked very heavy, so I want to give her a chance to drop her young there where they'd survive, as opposed to out here. The other thing that's surprising enough, and you may see them up here, is that there's a couple of uh, my other favorite fish, uh, the uh, yeah, the zebra fish. And they were much smaller than I thought I bought uh, when I bought six of them and put them in here. And, and they're not getting very big. But then again, somebody said, well, how many times a day do you feed them? Well, I feed them once. Well, that's it. And so I'm not a multi-time a day feeder uh, and just surprised. Although one time from over in East Brunswick, New Jersey, I found a tank full of really gorgeous, big zebra fish and I bought like six of them. And they, they did fine for a while and then over time they just all disappeared. So these ones are schooling nicely. They, they seem to like the flow of the water from the filter up there. So they're always swimming into it, which always amazes me, the energy these fish must have to swim in moving water like that. But the guppies are 
they, they remind me of guppies as I knew them back when I was a child. All right, they're not. If you look at YouTube, you see some really fancy guppies. Uh, this has some split tail guppies, for example, and these are all uh, guppies that I've bred, and I'm not breeding them in any particular way. It's just keeping them in a tank where the babies will grow up. And you can see the split tail on this particular guppy, and there's quite a few of them like that. And that's not a chewed up tail. That's exactly the way it's growing out. And if you look closely, I think I can catch them here. There's another one. There's the two of them next to each other. And so there's a bunch of them like that here, along with some other nice colorful tails. And uh, some of them are just the colorful bodies. I remember as a child buying guppies uh, with my limited budget. And they're always such striking colorful fish. And so I'm pleased with that. And you can see enough of them uh, of the same look that obviously they're breeding true and uh, it, it's kind of nice sitting back watching them and seeing the the same coloration and the tail growing out as you see in some of these here so anyway that's sort of what's uh, this tank's all about at this point and uh, let's move over to the boat tank as they call it Here's the bow tank, and that's doing very well. You see off to the left there, that's the Kabamba, which has come back from just a couple sprigs and really fills out the left-hand side of this tank. And I keep chopping it off and planting down below, so it's filling out nicely. But then if you go over to the center, there's the other part of that plant that I said came from Discus Madness that I was uh, so admiring their big plant. Well, this is as big as their plant was at this point. And uh, I've got to thin this tank out somehow, but I don't have uh, Bruce's ability just to cut a plant and throw it away. I, it just doesn't work for me. And then below, what's coming back is this wide leaf plant. Very light lime green color, but you can see it's really growing out nicely. So I pushed some plants out of the way to give it the show, uh, the, the stage that uh, I so enjoy seeing. The other thing you'll see here, and I gotta tell you, I really enjoy the fact that these tetras, uh, with their Pristilla tetras, uh, have that brilliant tipped fin, the top fin, and they are schooling nicely. They tend to stay here in the uh, valve plants, but there's about six of them there. And uh, they're doing very well and very attractive, even though they don't have a whole lot of color with them. With that little bit of color you see there, it's, it's certainly very attractive. And of course, we have uh, the angelfish, the tricolored sharks, a couple of neons. The neons are doing well in this tank. Uh, and then we have those denison barbs that I am so thrilled with. They are doing very well and getting bigger and the coloration comes out even more so when they're big like this. And I've always admired them in the tanks uh, that I see in the stores. And so now I finally got my school of them that have grown up from the small ones you saw originally some time ago. Some of the serpe uh, right there in the center. And overall just a tank full of plants and some happy fish. Uh, trying to think if there's anything special here. Uh, just things going well as they have been for some time. And there's that serpe and some of the neons. All very pretty fish. And what I like about this tank is it's so overgrown that you can sit here in my lounge chair and just sit back and enjoy uh, the fish coming out from behind things. And so it's almost like a surprise when they show up. The pearl gourami that you see up here is still doing well. It's the last of the pearl gouramis. Uh, they've, over the past couple of years, have di disappeared one by one or died, and I fished them out. Uh, so everybody's doing well here. The angelfish are not out in front right now, but they're doing well back behind the kabamba. And uh, I'm very pleased. It's uh, very enjoyable. Uh, having a problem with the algae on the glass. Uh, the Pocosmos hasn't been doing as good a job as they have in the past. And in preparation for this video, I got some uh, pads and really tried to clean off the glass. And boy, it is so hard on there that I couldn't get it all off. 
Uh, so you may notice some of it in the video. I'm not sure. I've got most of it, but it just can't get it off there. So I've got to do more work on that. All right, let's go into the office tank. Oh, but before we do that, a quick visit over here to the uh, better tank. The one male better is left. The other red one passed away a short while ago. And just recently, in fact yesterday, I took one of the very heavy female black mollies and put her in the other side of this with hopes that she would drop her young and then filled that up with excess plant as protection for the young. So far she's not been swimming around much, but boy she was certainly chased around by the males in the office tank and I just felt uh, to give her a break and also try and see if we can't get some more babies from there. All right, now we'll go into the office tank. Okay, we're in the office now, and uh, you see there's that pineapple sword female right in the center, very heavy. Uh, a couple of brick red sword tails, one of them in the center there is very heavy. The other one looks like she's shed some babies, and there are some babies in here. But the one I'm most proud of right now, and I'm cheating a little bit by throwing a little bit of food in there to get them to stay out in front for us, is those black mollies that we got over in Cherry Hill uh, a couple of videos ago. And they're doing very well, and I've been looking for, and have not been finding until just recently, uh, the very high fin, sail fin, uh, these are sa uh, sail fin male black mollies, and I'm trying to get a view here where you can see them with their fin up to appreciate most of the females you're running around here with. But let's see if we can capture a male or two for you down here. I just dropped a couple of tabs in there and there's some babies down there. There's one of the males and he's over underneath that plant to the right. Uh, when they were chasing the females yesterday they had their fins up and they were just beautiful and I just wish I had had the camera set up to capture some of that. But uh, there's one toward the top. Let's see if we can capture him for you. And he's uh, looking for the food that we have just dropped in. The female liar tail is doing very well. There's the male. There he is. These are beautiful fish. And I intend to give one pair to Bruce and his small tanks. They'll be able to do well. He's waiting for a shipment of fish in, including some black mollies. So we'll see what happens there. But meanwhile, Look at the contrast between the brick red sword and the black molly. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, they're all after the algae tabs that I just put in there, so I'm not sure we're going to get to see that high fin. The male, both males are right down there in the front. And uh, I don't know if I go out of focus if I get in too close here. But I hope you can see their finnage. Uh, and like I said, their sail fin lyre tail. Nice combination. Really a beautiful fish. I was very pleased with a recommendation I got here on YouTube of a fish store locally, you know, like 45 minutes away, that actually had uh, those mollies that I was looking for. So we rushed right over and we picked up all but one of the last ones they had, so like four. And uh, I'm just hoping that we can capture that finnage for you. Most of them are females, but the two... Uh, Sailfin males. There's one right above the center. They're both down in that mix of fish right now. There she goes. He's going after one of the females, so we should get some finnage shown there. I'll just let this go for a while. You see some split tail guppies in here. But I thinned this out quite a bit just a week ago, putting them into the bigger tanks, really in preparation for something that's going to happen here uh, in the next two weeks. We're having the windows replaced throughout the house, the condominium here. And this tank is right up against my desk, which is also up against the windows in here. And so the only way they're gonna be able to put those windows in is for me to take this tank and move it, and I can't move it. Uh, I'm gonna to have to take it down completely, move the fish into something temporarily, uh, 
good chance to clean out all that gravel which has the nourishment for the plants that are doing so well here uh, and I'm not looking forward to that it's going to be a lot of work but it has to be done and uh, the bigger problem is the desk itself I don't know what's going to happen with that desk it's not it's not movable it's a big l-shaped desk uh, that maybe if I take every drawer out maybe we can move it slightly to help them get the windows in but uh, very much enjoy having the peacefulness of this tank nearby my working environment. And if I try and back up a little bit here, maybe I can give you a sense of what this office, as I call it, is like. So we're going to be have some movement. Sorry about that. And you get a sense there's the tank and there's that desk I'm talking about. And so it's a very comfortable place to work. I've got everything I need here and I spend most of my day here working on volunteer work uh, for organ donation and transplant world that I serve. I've got a nice view out the window here into some bird feeders uh, that attract nice colorful birds and a nice uh, view in the condominium common grounds. And then like I say, I have the opportunity to enjoy uh, the fish right nearby. So. If I'm on a conference call, I can be turning and watching this. I put my glass on so I can see this smaller fish and can uh, pay attention to the call at the same time, see what's going on here. All right, well, that's uh, the January 2021 update. I hope you've enjoyed it. The plants continue to do well with that fertilizing program. And uh, like I say, the next one will be after I've cleaned this tank up completely and moved the fish back and forth. And we're, we're seeing some baby black mollies, of course, a couple. I thought I'd see more. Same thing with the uh, sword tails. We're seeing babies in there and uh, they're thriving nicely, but not a whole lot. I'm surprised. I would have expected more. I mean, when I say some, I'm talking about at any one time, I'll see five or six uh, of those babies uh, beyond the birthing stage. Uh, and some of them grow up, as you can see this young one right there, that's uh, one of the young ones that have grown up to almost, uh, let me call them teenage size, as opposed to the babies, which are beyond just having been born, uh, so they're safer in here from any attack. And of course we do still have the two clown loaches, which are buried in their cave behind this. I'm surprised they're not out looking for that algae tab too. Okay, I promise to stop. I will stop. Hope you're having a safe and healthy new year. And I did get my vaccine shot. I recommend it highly. Um, I know people are having trouble getting in line for that. But when you can, make sure you do. And meanwhile, enjoy your fish. It's a great hobby. It really is. There's, there's the finish I'm talking about. The two males are over here in that corner. Come on. Get away from the corner and come on out and show off. All right. Like I said, I promise to stop.